everyone. Thank you for your interest in this new NPTEL course entitled 20th Century American Drama. I am Meryn Simiraj. I teach in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences at IIT Madras. This course, 20th Century American Drama, is conceived as a 12-week course and the lessons will be spread across 30 hours. So this is primarily meant for students who are interested in English uh, language and literature and the target audience would ideally be the ones who are pursuing a BA, MA or a PhD degree. And the pitch of the course has been tailor-made to suit various needs of the curricula as well as give an insight into uh, the theoretical frameworks and the critical insights which would be useful in pursuing higher education. There are no prerequisites for this course at the moment. However, a critical interest in uh, theoretical frameworks and also various historical periods of uh, uh, literature would be very, very useful. Let me quickly take you through the objectives and the methodology uh, adopted for this course. So one of the major objectives is to map the critical tradition and historiography of American drama, particularly by outlining the national, cultural and artistic struggles of the 20th century. So the history of uh, the American literature would be mapped against the history of uh, European modernism and the background uh, provided for each of the texts would be outlining uh, these struggles and how the drama, American drama, uh, has emerged as a product of these different um, conflicting ads and sometimes uh, complementing uh, factors. And uh, the second objective is to foreground the dominant tre trends, themes and schools of thought as well as a movement and the critical concerns which are specific to the genre and uh, some of the general concerns which are specific to the uh, period. We will be analyzing this course through a close reading of selected texts and they will be pitched and mapped against the particular periods which are also witnessed their productions. The third objective would be to help the learners examine drama as a site that reflects the socio-cultural, political as well as a psychological milieu of a nation. And this is done through an understanding of uh, the twin cultures, the cultures of performance, the culture of performance as well as the culture of print. So uh, though we will be focusing on drama as uh, a print form, there will be a lot of discussion in terms of the various other factors of production which enabled the uh, uh, staging of the drama, the drama as uh, it was performed in front of an audience. So in some sense, this course intends to introduce the learners to the scope and vitality of American drama in the 20th century. This is the structure of uh, the course and uh, we will be looking at the various literary, historical and cultural contexts and this will be done through a close reading of specific uh, uh, plays and their uh, context of production and we will be looking at various time periods in order to understand the uh, changing shifts in trends and movements and also how the theme begins to reflect the concerns of the nation. This is done through uh, an understanding of a series of representative uh, playwrights who are spread across different decades throughout the 20th century and uh, themes will be something which would uh, the common themes and the common threads which will help us understand not just American drama but the American milieu of the 20th century will be something which would be foregrounded throughout the course. So these are the uh, set of uh, plays that we will be looking at throughout this uh, course and we will be primarily focusing on five major periods which are uh, divided on the basis of uh, you know certain literary historiographical concerns the details of which will be explained to you in the course of this uh, uh, discussion and uh, the plays that we are looking at are Emperor Jones you can't take it with you death of a salesman all my sons the glass menagerie the zoo story a raisin in the sun who's afraid of Virginia Woolf and the piano lesson so we begin by tracing the beginnings of American drama and in that process we also look at how American modernism uh, gets represented in contrast to British modernism and European modernism and how this uneasy modernity becomes a, a site for American drama to flourish in the beginning. So we look at this period from 1890 to 1930s in order to understand how realism emerges as a very, very strong uh, trope in most of the plays of uh, those times and one of the earliest and the most significant work being Emperor Jones by Eugene O'Neill and this is a play which uh, looks at the complexities of race and individualism especially in the early uh, 20th century it uh, through this uh, interesting tale of a protagonist it covers a number of aspects which will be uh, interesting to us even in the contemporary in terms of the discussions on race and modernity. Um, the second phase, which is from, uh, you know, uh, roughly a decade just uh, before the Second World War, the 1930s and the early 1940s, 
it uh, witnessed a surge in dramatic realism. So there were a number of experimental plays which were uh, an offshoot of and a continuation of the expressionistic as, as well as the realistic trends of the early 20th century. And this manifests uh, itself in this uh, representative comedy, You Can't Take It With You, uh, jointly produced by George Kaufman and Moss Hart. And this uh, play was a huge success and it also showcased uh, the way in which uh, certain idiosyncrasies operate within families. So the play is set in New York and uh, it has uh, as main characters the members of uh, a rather odd family, an odd American family, which also critiques a number of things which are happening during the pre-war decade. We then move on to look at two very iconic plays by Arthur Miller, Death of a Salesman and All My Sons, where the uh, cr where critique of the American dream gets foregrounded. So this is also um, uh, designated as a post-World War uh, II period. So we do find the crisis of the individual in dialogue with the crisis that the nation is uh, facing as well. In these uh, two stellar plays, we find that the crisis of uh, the individual and the psychological turmoil begins to be mapped against the larger sociocultural and uh, political and historical background. And uh, following that in the um, a couple of decades in the 1940s and 50s, uh, there is a lot of exploration into psychological and existential plays and this manifests itself in some of the representative works of uh, that time by Tennessee Williams, Glass Menagerie, Zoo Story by uh, Edward Albee and A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. So in all of these works we find uh, some imaginative touches being added to realism and this also leads to a lot of scope for experimenting with the uh, vitality of American theatre, which uh, almost functions as a mirror held out to the society. And uh, in Glass Menagerie is a memory play, and in Zoo Story and the Race in the Sun, we find that the uh, deep turmoil, the psychological turmoils of the individual, it uh, gets mapped onto the larger social historical realities. So it provides a platform for us to critique as well as comprehend the ways in which individuals are negotiating within families as well as with the society and with the uh, larger dreams of the nation outside of uh, their private space. And uh, in the 1960s and 1970s, we find an emergence of the social and political plays and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf by Edward Albee. It captures again the crisis within the domestic space and it particularly uh, critiques the institution of uh, marriage and also the various ways in which the individual uh, turmoils are in dialogue with the crisis that the nation is going through at various points of time. So what is most interesting in all of these plays is that the background, the socio-political and the historical background which gets uh, captured in these uh, uh, specific plays, they almost function as a biography of uh, the uh, social milieu itself. So we get an understanding of the changing shifts, trends, movements and concerns of the American society through a close reading of these plays. So these plays are also very representational in the sense that they give a number of images for us to almost see what is happening in the background and what causes, what aspects of the society, what aspects of the, uh, uh, the national policies, how they affect the way in which relationships and how individuals negotiate with their own selves. And uh, finally, we'll be looking at The Piano Lesson by August Wilson, a 1987 play, which uh, very tellingly explores the complex relation between race and self. It's also about an individual trying to live in denial in order to accentuate what he thinks is his ideal self. So through this complex understanding and complex telling of these different uh, plays, we, I hope, you know, the uh, learners will get an understanding into the uh, scope and vitality of this uh, domain of uh, American drama, 20th century American drama. I do look forward to interacting with you in the times to come as part of this course. Thank you for your time and welcome to this course. Uh, 20th century American drama. Thank you.